Hi, I'm Jody Worrell. Today we're going to learn a group of classic rock and roll licks that can be associated with such artists as Chuck Berry, Scotty Moore, or James Burton, just to name a few. During each segment, I'll briefly discuss the theory at work in the lick. We'll also have a chance to jam together by trading the licks back and forth with the track. Today our licks are played over a rockin' groove that just hangs on an A chord. Let's look at that first lick. Alrighty, here's our first lick. It's got, uh, it's got a little pickup lick to it, so we would start the lick on beat four, one, two, three, da, 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 one, and two, and three, and four, and, so it's on beat three, and, so uh, we'll, we'll discover that when the track runs, but those notes are sixth fret, third string, and I'm doing a little slide there. I think that just gives it a, a cool sound, and I think that's the way it would be approached, instead of... So a little slide up to six, and then five to seven on the second string. Then we're gonna do three sets of three, playing uh, the fifth fret on the second string, fifth fret on the first string, and approaching those groups of three from a half step below. There it is. And I'm doing all downstrokes. This is rock and roll. This is kind of a the Chuck Berry thing. He just kind of really, really does a downstroke thing. And it, it, it doesn't sound the same if you go. It, it just sort of, that low note needs to be slightly before the high note. They have to really be symmetrical that way. So here we go. One, two, three. After you've played that third one, we're going to play eight, seven, five on the second string, and I'm still going to do do downstrokes on that. Then we're going to play five to six, right back to where we were on the third string, but we're going to really play that fifth fret rather than just sliding past it, it'll have its own note value. And then play the seventh fret of the fourth string. One, two, three. And I sort of think of that, the last one of the of the two note things on the fifth fret of the first and second strings, I think of that as the beginning of that lick, rather than the lick starting on the. Just mentally, for me, I feel that downbeat. One and two and three and four. One. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. There's lick number one. Now I'll play that one with the track. Okay, we're going to trade that lick back and forth with the track. I'll go first, I'll leave the space after me for you to play, and we'll do it three times each. One, two, three. Here I go. One, two, three. Now your turn. One, two, three. I'll go again. One, two, three. 
your turn. One, two, three. All right. Be sure and take the time to work on that trading section until you can play it perfectly all three times. Let's move on to number two. All right, so we're starting off with uh, a little, little pickup slide thing from the fourth fret up to the fifth. Same thing we were doing in lick number one. This time we're only playing twice, so that's beat one and one and. Then go down to the seventh fret on the third and third and second strings. I'm going just with my third finger. Down to the fifth and the fifth on the second and third strings. But we're going to quickly hammer on that sixth fret. So if, if that fifth fret on the second string rings through all this, that's fine. If it doesn't, that's okay too. If it just turns into two notes in there one, or either way, that's kind of nice. Two notes, then one, then one. Or I kind of like it. Uh, I kind of like that fifth fret note on the second string kind of clearing out once that hammer on comes. So that'll, that'll all kind of happen naturally. <clears throat> then we're going to push. You see how we've got a bar line crossing uh, note. So we've got those ties that start on the last eighth note of that bar and hang over to the, the first eighth note of the other one. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two and one. So it's, a lot of it's the same, we just need to push, that's what we call it when we play before beat one of the following bar, we're kind of making an anticipation or a push. So we're going to push that uh, figure back on the first and second strings at the fifth fret. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two. So after that push, we hit it again, down to that 7 and 7 on the 2nd and 3rd strings, 5 and 5, same strings, hammer on, and then right back across the 5th fret of the 1st and 2nd strings. Here's leg number two. I'll play that one with the track. Again, we're trading licks with the track with me going first. Remember, we'll each do it three times. And you. One more time. Yours. Okay. We're moving on to number three. Alrighty, this is a series of thirds. We call uh, 
the interval of a third when you play both notes together, just playing a third. Uh, it's starting off with the uh, this little figure I'm associating with this A chord. Sort of the the regular old A chord that you would play at the open position, but it's 12 frets up. So a little bit out of tune, but that's the way that's the way guitars are. Start off on the sliding up to the 12th fret, first string, 14th fret, second string. And we're gonna hit every one of these little figures uh, twice. So twice on that, move down two frets at, to the 10th and the 12th on the first and second strings. Now we're going to switch to first and second fingers because our gap between fingers has changed. I'm keeping my first finger, first finger started here, went to here, went to here, and I'm changing which finger I pair it with to sort of build in the interval, build in the uh, the gap between the two notes. So here we go. Now switch to the first and second fingers. So that'll be the ninth fret and the tenth fret on the first and second strings. Take that down two, uh, two frets, one step. Again, all down strokes, I think. That's just what feels right to me. Then we're going to move to the 10th fret of the 2nd string, the 11th fret of the 3rd string. I'm going to switch, since I'm right here, I'm just going to add my 3rd finger on the 3rd string and pair it with the already there 2nd finger, if that makes any sense. Add the 2nd finger, a uh, 3rd finger, excuse me, and slide that back up so we go. Notice how my fingers are not doing much. They're just kind of going back and forth. It's almost like we're going, you could, you could fret all three of those notes and just play the correct strings and get the lick. We don't want all those notes, but the fingering of it is that convenient. So we wind up with the second finger on the 10th fret of the second string, third finger, 11th fret of the third string. Then we're going to do a little half step. We're going to go play that figure twice, then go down a half step to 9 and 10, and wind up on 8 and 9. That gives us an A7. There's lick number three. I'm going to play that one against our jam track. Now we'll trade licks on number three, three times. Now you, again. You're going to get the most out of this in any lesson by taking your time and practicing each section until you've mastered it. That's when you'll really be able to retain the licks and bring them into your day-to-day -day playing. Let's move on to lick number four. This lick has a lot of notes, but it's really the same lick 
twice in two different octaves. So the first part of the lick is fifth fret on the first string twice, eight seven five on the second string, then seven five six. It's kind of a weird thing. You can put hammer-ons, pull-offs in there uh, to taste. I like to always hammer on that five to six rather than that. Not that. <clears throat> then an octave of that lick is seven, seven, five to four, and I'm going to do that both with my first finger. This is on the fourth string. That's going to be a brief departure from our first finger, fifth fret, third finger, seventh fret kind of position. I'm going to come right back to that fifth string on the seventh fret with my third finger. Then down to the fifth, down to the third with your first finger, three, three one, one. Then hammer on. Same note. Hammer on that first finger to second finger on the third to fourth and on the fifth string. And wind up with that fifth fret note on the sixth string. Ah. There it is, lick number four. Let's hear how that one sounds against our track. Again. Rolling that track again, we'll trade licks on number four. Now you. Here's me again. Now you. Last one. And you. Okay. I hope you enjoyed these licks today. Be sure and check out my other lessons on Chuck Berry and other early rock pioneers. I'm Jody Worrell. I'll see you next time.